question now is how will Hezbollah respond? Wait and see. Our message will continue. Our line will continue. will never stop. Hezbollah supporters say there will be retaliation when the group is ready for it. Actually, we're angry, but for, for the past 30 years, Hezbollah has, taught us, has always taught us that uh, any retaliation has to be logical, any retaliation has to be well studied before, and this is one of uh, our points of strength against the Israeli enemy. Thousands of men from Hezbollah are in Syria. I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. As you just heard a moment ago there, live footage from Al Jazeera's live uh, news broadcast. Uh, we were able to pick up some video footage there of Hezbollah and the reaction that they are showing uh, on the street, the militant group there in Lebanon in regards to the attack that was done by the Israelis, the, the bombing that killed uh, six of their own uh, commanders as well as six Iranians, including one Iranian general. We'll be bringing you later in the news here a little bit more information about the Iranian general that was killed in this attack. Uh, but as they said, they will attack, they will uh, attack Israel, they're going to invade Israel, and it's going to be at a time of their own choosing. As the one gentleman says there, or the one terrorist, I should say, because definitely a terrorist organization, Hezbollah, uh, mentions that we have learned from Hezbollah that to control and choose our own timing of revenge. And this we will do at our own timing. We will retaliate. We will attack Israel for what they have done. But anyway, let's, let's, this is just to cap it off right there. I wanted to bring that out to you. We have a very serious, serious breaking news issue, though, that is, that is a part of a very large picture here. So I'm going to take my time. This is also, again, another... Um, Prophetic segment of our news. It's going to be mainly news, but I want to bring in the, uh, what the stage is being set. Those that have not seen it as of yet, please go and watch Israeli News Live. Israel has officially been divided. Uh, we go into this broadcast here about uh, what the prophetic implications are uh, in the dividing of Israel, what's actually going to happen between the nations, and I think it gives you a good, sound uh, biblical perspective on world news. Uh, so I'm going to take you right into this very serious news here. Russian defense minister arrives in Tehran for a two-day visit. You heard me right. Russians, the Russians' defense minister from Moscow has arrived in Tehran for two days of talks. Uh, and by the way, these talks here, you can definitely tell by what you're going to hear in this article here uh, that these talks are not just uh, passive. This is from TASS News Agency, the Moscow TASS News Agency uh, online, where I picked this story up here. It is Sergei Sohogu and Hussein Dagan will discuss ways of intensifying military and military technology cooperation between the two countries as well as question a, uh, questions of regional and global security. Okay, yeah, it's very, very serious here. Uh, in the article here, said Tehran, uh, Russian Defense Minister uh, Sergei so uh, Soigu arrived in Tehran for a two-day official visit to meet uh, Iranian Defense Minister Bri Brigade General Jose Dagan. Dagan. Uh, so they will discuss ways of intensifying military and military technology co cooperation between the two countries, as well as questions of regional and global security at talks on January the 20th. The Russian Defense Minister Press Service Chief Major General Igor uh, Konoshchenov said in his previous statement that the two countries uh, were planning to sign a military cooperation agreement during Sogi's visit. Military cooperation. Let me read to you some of the things that I highlighted in this article here. The Fars News Agency has quoted uh, Jose Dagan as saying that it was necessary to develop defense ties between Tehran and Moscow, which in his words are vital factor of stability and security in the middle, excuse me, in the entire Middle East region and Central Asia. General Dagan expressed his opinion back on in October 2013 is when this was actually stated there. 
He also said that Russia occupied a special place in Iran's foreign policy. Another quote here, ongoing cooperation between the two countries will contribute to the con uh, consolidation of efforts to strengthen regional and global security. Iran's defense minister said that was current, not, not 2013. Iran's news agency, uh, IRNA, in turn has described Sergei Soegi's two-day visit as an outstanding event. The Russian defense minister's visit will take the Russian-Iranian relations to a new level of security cooperation, IRNA actually reported. That's what they were stating there. Uh, they also stated that the um, problems of, of anti-terrorist struggle in the Middle East, IRNA also noted the convergence of the two countries' approaches to problems of energy markets linked to radical slump of prices for fuel and energy. These things are very, very critical that you see here. Now, uh, let me take you quickly to a biblical aspect of this particular prophetic news uh, update. Let's go to that. Now, I want to take you over to Ezekiel. This is the prophecy of Gog and Magog war. Now, uh, what I'm wanting to share with you, you have to understand, this is a preparation. I do not believe that Russia will strike right at this moment but it's not going to be too far off in the future before they do. Let's look at Ezekiel 38, 7, beginning at 38, 7. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Of course, that's Israel. Israel was carried away by the sword, by the Romans. They were dispersed through all the world, and they've been, they have been brought back, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste. But it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Now, you have to understand, what is considered safety doesn't mean that there's not war. Safety is the fact that God has been defending Israel. It's what we've seen in the Six Days War. It's what we see in several of Israel's war, the end of War of Independence. All these wars fought against all odds uh, and, and amazing victories. Uh, also, it says here, uh, Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be a, like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many peoples with thee. Now, this is exactly what we see it, Russia doing right now. She's forming alliances. She's forming a lot more alliances than what people realize. It's something we're going to cover in the news tonight. We're getting into that. Right now, we're looking at the alliance between Russia and Iran, the military cooperation. And as these two uh, entities here, these two nations are important because of what we're discussing on news. So let's continue to go on here. Uh, All thy bands with thee. Thus saith the Lord, verse 10, God, it shall also come to pass at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go into the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them there at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. It's modern-day Israel. You have to remember the city of Jerusalem many years ago was just a walled city. Now Jerusalem just lays out sprawled all over the hills. There's really nothing to protect Israel, the unwalled city. Isn't it interesting how they stopped the wall in between the West Bank and Israel? So it never became a walled city. That's one reason why the wall project stopped, because God said it would be an unwalled city. So the wall could never be complete. Had they completed a wall, then it would be a walled city, and the prophecy would not be fulfilled. So we still have many, many, many hundreds of miles of borders wide open, all of the cities, all of the places in Israel wide open, and nothing to stop the enemy from coming in. <clears throat> so, um, that was, that's in verse 11, I will go, halfway in verse 11, I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. Uh, verse 12, to take a spoil and to take prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. If you notice, it's very important to catch this right here. 
to turn thine hand upon the desolate places. Remember, I've said this in our teaching ministry under the Institute of Biblical Research, that the desolation was their hearts that are desolate. It wasn't just the temple. The temple was only a type. You have to remember, Mashiach came at that time. Something I'll go in with on a different, it's not for the news, but he had already came. He came he, and he did what he was supposed to do. He gave the Spirit of God the, 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 the re restoration of what was supposed to be restored back to Israel. According to the prophecy that he made in Genesis in the Garden of Eden, Speaking to the woman and her seed, that life, that tree of life was restored back. Only the remnant received that life into their hearts. The rest of them, they went into, into bondage. And he says, when Yeshua wept over Jerusalem, said, how often I would have hovered you as a hen with her own brood, but you would not. Your house is left unto you desolate until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, or blessed is our Savior, or our Yeshua that has come. That's in the Hebrew uh, version of, the, of this book here. Now, what is this point that, we're, that I'm making here, that you understand this? Blessed are, 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 you know, your house is desolate. Not the temple, the heart, the human heart. They were meant to receive the Holy Spirit, but they didn't. They're gathered back in the land. Notice what the verse says. To turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, they're only inhabited in a natural way. And upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods and that dwell in the midst of the land. But it's still a desolate place. The human heart, they haven't recognized Yeshua quite to be Mashiach when this is happening. So it does. this is not quite the moment where they're going to recognize him. Just a little thought to throw your way. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto, the, unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take prey, to carry away silver and gold, and to take away the cattle and goods to take a great spoil? Some people say that's the oil. <clears throat> Believe me, that is one of the things that Russia will use to justify, justify this war. It's because they made an agreement with the Palestinians. Mahmoud Abbas was there last year in January of 2014. He signed a deal for the oil and natural gas off of Gaza, as well as the oil deals in the Golan and inside uh, Judea and Samaria, where they believe that there's a huge amount of oil there. But Russia is not going to come in just yet. It's going to be another war that takes place before Russia comes in. Now, let's look at this. Remember, what is happening now with the way Russia has changed her posture, the Iranians now have an excuse to want to attack Israel for sure. One of their generals has been murdered, or not murdered, but killed, assassinated. Uh, he's been killed in their mind. I'm thinking the way they would think. They consider that, they, that he was murdered, so therefore they're wanting to retaliate. Israel has assassinated him, not intentionally. They didn't know who the target was, at least from what we can see from preliminary reports. They didn't know. But let's go back to, to the news uh, that, that we're looking at here, and then I need to come back and, and share with you something here so you'll understand. Um, All right, as you're seeing, uh, as I showed you at the very beginning of the clip here, Hezbollah is already talking, uh, uh, vowing their revenge uh, for the killing of their own troops that were there in Syria. Uh, it is obvious, though, that Iran, working with uh, Hezbollah, they are planning the, the attack, they're planning the, uh, the invasion into Israel. Uh, this is only going to set them back for a very short period of time. But again, this is a coordinated effort. This is a coordinated effort because why? Rome wants Jerusalem. The Vatican wants Jerusalem. Giulio Meotti, Italian journalist, reported this in, in a major article in Israel National News, reported this quite some time back now, that the Pope of Rome wants the entire basin. He's gotten that, but now they need to take and change some of the things that are going on in Israel in order for him to build his own temple there, to put his own, they will call it a third temple, but it's really for the Pope of Rome to have his own seat there. And this may even bring about uh, them staging an attack on the Vatican so he can move his headquarters right there to, to Israel. 
But nonetheless, the Pope wants this area. And of course, the United Nations, who's his military, as well as, as the United States being the chief military force for the United Nations, he uses these forces here to engage in battles. This is why we have seen the Allied, quote unquote, Allied forces have been bombing ISIS. Well, the United States uh, created ISIS. Up in, they were trained, many of their leaders were trained in the Jordanian uh, the hills there. This is why you see uh, the, the, the Pope goes to Jordan. Uh, this is why the Jordanians have control of the Temple Mount. They, have, they trained these men, this ISIS group, they, the Americans did. They, Barack Obama was kind enough to leave all the military hardware behind that he would ever need for this battle. So this battle has been planned for quite some time. So it was the United States training and coordinated with what the Vatican's desire was, was to raise up a problem in the Middle East in order to bring the military in. Now, not all of the Israeli politicians go along with this plan. Only a small few, and I can't say who's who, not going to in this case here, who's actually siding with the Vatican. All you have to do though is watch some news footage to see who goes and bows down to the Pope. Definitely, we have Shimon excuse me, Shimon Perez there, and we also see that, you know, Prime Minister Netanyahu as well is bowing to the Pope, but not just him, you have many rabbis doing the exact same thing. So what is going on behind the scenes? Why did they give up the tomb of David? Well, the Vatican has gotten what they want so far, but they're not done. They have to have that temple there. I'm wondering if the Temple Institute is not a part of this great conspiracy. May very well be. So anyway, they created the problem of ISIS, and now the coalition forces have been bombing them. In order to keep the media uh, to, in a frenzy, to, to, to have more of a reason to continue to do uh, airstrikes on, on, on these targets in Syria, they have to create more problems. So they have now they have the attack of Charlie uh, Hebdo in Paris, France. That just rallies the French along with this. But what side is the French really on? You have the Germans, everyone, all wanting to fight terrorism. Of course, we have in the news as well that the, the uh, Arabs in Germany, the Muslims said that if they do a march, even if it's a peaceful march against the Muslims in their country, which Germany is threatening to do, that they will retaliate with weapons. This is what Germany is having to deal with right now. So it appears that they're trying to up bring a huge upheaval among, in the Muslim world. And unfortunately, I wonder how many Muslims really realize that they're being played by a bigger puppeteer in all of this scheme to begin with. All right, so we also see we have another issue going on right now as well. Another little issue that just sparked up here, and that's in Yemen. And it's important to know this because if you look at the prophecy with Russia, that, that, that king of the north, the Gog and Magog war over in Ezekiel, Libya happens to be one of those countries that come in as part of that coalition that comes down with him. And we know that the Yemenites are very, very much in favor of Russia. But now they've got a crisis in Russia. And it could be because the Vatican is very nervous. It says in, on the BBC News, Yemen crisis, uh, Houthi rebels surround PM's residence. Uh, the Yemen Shi'i Houthi rebels uh, have surrounded the prime minister's residence in the center of the capital of Sana'a. Officials said the gunmen have surrounded the palace and the prime minister is inside. Government spokesman was quoted as saying, fierce clashes erupted early in the day in which at least eight people were killed before truce was agreed. The clashes were the most intense since the rebels uh, overran uh, Sana'a in September. Witnesses told the AFP news agency that the fighting between the rebels and the uh, presidential guard erupted early on Monday after rebel uh, reinforcements were deployed near the presidential palace. The president, presidential guard then sent troops onto the surrounding streets, the eyewitnesses added. A, journal, a journalist in the city, uh, Charlene Rodriguez, said there had been intense clashes in the morning followed by several hours of gunfire. So there is unrest there, and it's always interesting to see that. It is the Shia that are actually in the, in the unrest, not the Sunnis there. The Shia, of course, 
would not be loyal to the Vatican. The Sunnis are, but the Shiites are not loyal to the Vatican. So very interesting to say the least, the, the, the articles that are coming out uh, there. Now, moving on, let's look at Israel. Because like I said, I believe there is a mastermind plan. I do believe that there's politicians in Israel that are behind this, that know very well what the Vatican wants. Something must be going on. They gave over uh, the Mount Zion to the, to the Catholic Church and the, and, and the Orthodox Jews that, that do believe in God and do have a heart. They have fought bitterly but can do nothing about it. They're thrown out of the tomb of David so that the Vatican can do a communion service in the tomb. It's just become ironic. And now, in the northern border, as we reported yesterday, the northern border of Israel on the Lebanese border, the, the Israeli uh, defense forces have actually pulled back some of its forces up there, and neither are they willing to investigate the citizens' complaints that the Lebanese are building terror tunnels. In fact, in a report in Israel National News, they say that the Israelis are having to try to find private contractors and raise money in order to dig for themselves and investigate about all the tunnels that they suspect that are being dug into Israel for a mass invasion from the north, from the Lebanese, from the north. But because of the attack that happened uh, where Israel uh, attacked the convoy uh, with the uh, Israel's continually there on a regular basis here have been attacking any convoys that appear to be carrying uh, weapons into, into Lebanon from Syria, from the Syrian side. But in this case here, they hit some very top uh, commanders in the process. They have now deployed today uh, the Iron Dome on the Syrian border, up on the Golan area in the Syrian border to protect from any Hezbollah uh, retaliations uh, uh, for, for the airstrikes in which they conducted there. The IDF has raised the terror alert level on the Israeli border with Syria and the Golan Heights. The foreign media reported Monday night after IFA reported attacked a Syrian military target Sunday. Several Iron Dome missile defense batteries have been deployed along the border ahead of the possible attacks from both government and rebel groups in Syria, according to Sky News. That was reported there. But it still it gets more interesting. Um, let me just let me bring up, let me kind of share with you a little bit too. Uh, um, in the in, in the in the Al Jazeera, they report that Iran did confirm the death of the general in the attack, which we reported to you this morning. Uh, statements said that Mohammed Al Hadidi died in the alleged Israeli uh, raid that also killed members of Lebanon's Hezbollah. Uh, this was reported today on Al Jazeera's news here. We have his photo for you to see who he actually was. Iran has confirmed that the general of its elite revolutionary guards has died in the suspected Israeli strike in Syria that also killed six members of the Lebanese group Hezbollah. Shia, Iran, and Hezbollah uh, are Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's main regional allies in his war against the mainly Sunni rebels seeking to overthrow him. Uh, general Muhammad al-Hadadi uh, al and a number of fighters and Islamic resistance forces were attacked by the Zionist regime, according to the article here. Helicopters, a statement, and a Revolutionary Guards website said Monday, this brave general and some members of Hezbollah were martyred. The statement said al-Hadi was, was in Syria as an advisor helping the Syrian government to confront uh, Takfari Salalist. Sunni extremist, terrorist, as they called them. They were considered to be terrorist. Now, this is something too that we see in, in a lot of Russian reports on the media that we watch there, uh, or even as I brought this up to you earlier in the, in, the, in the cast here, that the Russians and the Iranians are saying they want to deal with terrorists. Well, what terrorists are they speaking about? These are the, these are the militants in Syria that are fighting the, the uh, Syrian regime, which are backed by the United States. So there again, we're seeing fronts all over the place are, are beginning to mount up. Uh, I don't think uh, really that the United States nor the Vatican actually had planned that Russia would actually begin to really make this type of alliance with Iran so quickly. They felt, felt like, no doubt, that with the Ukrainian crisis, 
it would keep Russia busy for quite some time. In fact, uh, in another news article that we brought out, I think it was in this morning's news there, was that Russia, according to an American general, uh, could only handle three, or could only handle one major front at a time. But it was obvious that Russia is building a war machine to handle up to three major fronts at one time. So therefore, could the Ukrainian crisis also be an attempt to divert Russia's military forces with another problem while America uh, joined with the United Nations forces going there on the Vatican's command to take control of all of northern Israel, the Golan, uh, Syria, part of Syria, as well as uh, the southern Lebanon, because why? They want that oil in that land. But they weren't banking on what just might happen if Russia and Iran joined forces earlier than what they expected. They thought maybe they could play it out. Uh, but anyhow, let's, let me take you to the biblical aspect of that, because it's very important in this news that we understand what's happening there. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 42 says, He shall stretch forth his hands also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Of course, we know the United States. And when I say the United States, you have to remember, and when I look at the Vatican here, the Vatican controls the U.S. and United Nations forces. That is their puppets. What the United Nations forces will not do, the U.S. will do at the Vatican's command. Ronald Reagan clearly showed, when he faced the obelisk at his inauguration, showed that the U.S. was now under Vatican control, and they are. Every war the Vatican once fought is fought in the name of the United States to make it look like a different war altogether, and they'll make up anything they have to to wage that war. And this scripture here says that, "...and the land of Egypt shall not escape," and it did not. They caused all kinds of unrest in Egypt uh, when things didn't go their way. Then he says here, But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt, and Libyans and Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Exactly what has happened. And of course, the Vatican controls all the treasuries of gold and silver. It's going to go a step further. That's also mentioning a one-world currency, at least a one-world currency between Europe, the EU, the United States, and whatever nations they control will go to a one-world monetary system. Now, whether or not Russia and China and Iran and all these nations will join does not look like that they will. In fact, they're going to turn on this group. Then it goes on to say, say here, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. The East be in Iran, possibly even China, because they see that China is also beginning to build a monetary system, buying up the gold of the world as much as they can to strengthen their own currency, and they're making alliances with Russia. And it's interesting. First, the East concerns them. That's Iran. Not really sure what Iran will do. This is one of the reasons why you see uh, Defense Minister Yolan standing on the border of the Syrian border wondering, what is Hezbollah doing in Syria? Why are there troops there? They knew they'd killed a senior, uh, a senior uh, Hezbollah figure there, but at that moment they did not realize they'd killed also an Iranian general. But it didn't seem to quite fit the plan that they had intended. This was something a little bit premature. Now it's even more premature What's Iran doing there? That's the scary point. And I have a feeling that's what Prime, uh, Defense Minister Yolan really was worried about. He wasn't worried about Hezbollah being in Syria. He was worried about Iran being in Syria. That was the big issue. And of course, we've already seen other photos of where uh, Iran has had troops down in Lebanon uh, overlooking the, uh, the border of Israel. Uh, so they've been involved in this for quite some time. Now, it says here, But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with a great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. This is what they're going to do. This is why the United Nations force will step up. They're wanting to push Hezbollah into attacking Israel. The sooner the better is what they're going to do now. They're going to force Lebanon's hand on Israel so that they can justify, in order to bring a United Nations force in there to take Syria, take northern, uh, take Lebanon, 
so that they will have full control of this area because what the United Nations need, uh, that is the EU and the United States, they need the oil rich lands of that area and they need full control. This is why the prince that shall come comes up strong with a small people. The Vatican has always used the Palestinian, created a Palestinian people and then used those people to keep the land of Israel divided. One reason why we say Israel has been officially divided. Once the Vatican was given the places they wanted, that was the official division that God was speaking about. And yes, two states, well, the whole world joined in and said the Palestinians were a state and they recognized them as such. The only reason you see the backing up now of the United States and a couple of other nations is because Vatican got what it wanted. And according to Ezekiel 35's prophecy, they said they would take this, both these states for themselves, which is about what's going to happen here. And as we see here, because he sees the trouble from the east and the north, the north is because now Russia is coming down to make the alliances with Iran. He knows he's got a short period of time. According to the American general, three to four years, maybe five years for Russia to build up the way they need to be. But with the alliances they're making with Iran, they could do it a lot sooner. And so therefore, the coalition forces have a short period of time to rapidly go in there and take everything they possibly can, leaving the Israelis in such a vulnerable state one reason why we believe the northern border has been weakened on Israel, to leave Israel in a vulnerable state so the true Jews that are there, according to biblical promise, will feel like the whole world has come against them. And that the United States, the, United, the coalition forces are the only ones that are able to come in. Then they will have the United Nations force that Shimon Peres agreed to give to the Vatican originally back in 1993. This was what was really going on while the Oslo Accords were going on. You have to look below the surface. Oslo Accords with Yasser Arafat at that time was only a cover-up of the real agreement, which was with the Vatican in 1993. Plenty of articles on that, just look it up. 1993, look up Barry Chamish, look up Guglielmo Miotti, others that wrote about these particular things. Barry Chamish, I believe, is the actual one that broke the news on this and made it worldwide headlines. Same thing happening again. It's not a covenant. It's not a dividing of the land for the Palestinians. They're just the puppet. And the puppeteer is the Vatican and certain leaders in Israel that are allowed to be the puppeteers of controlling the strings of who gets what. And there's never a referendum for the Jews, the true Jewish people, to decide for themselves that they have actually come home and the land belongs to Israel very serious. The Muslim world has really been riled up and I feel that it's, a lot of this is very intentional. We may not realize that, but I think there's a lot of things going on intentionally in order to for these coalition forces to do certain things. Anyway, I'm Stephen Ben-Denu, Israeli News Live. Shalom.